And here is the second of the two videos that I had um, from this source. And this um, being the one in which there were five hides, you found all five, and you got it pronounced. Um, so again, I did take a quick peek at it, but um, I've done some other stuff, and I've reviewed another video and done some other computer things. So it's given me a chance to kind of take a break from it before we begin. Um, so let's go. Also, by the way, you know, looking at the other one first, it did give me an opportunity to get an idea as to, um, you know, what, what are the strengths and weaknesses of this team? And, and is there any kind of a consistency across that? So I like that you have the ability to redirect the dog um, and get the dog into certain places. I noticed that we are, again, on a collar instead of a harness, and maybe you can help me get a good understanding of that. Um, so you get a really nice COB, a change in direction, and you get the positive alert there. I guess I guess my biggest concern about this, um, and, and it is successful, so that's really lovely. But, you know, if you're going to give a critique, you might as well critique. My biggest concern about this is how the dog isn't necessarily getting out in front. So it's good that you get deep in there in that corner, but I would tell you now, stop your feet and allow that dog to go ahead and drive out ahead of you. And the reason that that can be important, um, and, I've, and I've seen you do it. I've seen this team do that. Um, but for whatever, we're, we're not doing that now. And the reason that that is important is because we always, whenever possible anyway, we'd like the dog's nose to encounter that free airspace first. That way it goes undisturbed and uninterrupted by us. And that's just not the case here. But ultimately, it ended up being in success, and that's very good, and I'm, I'm happy for that. Okay, here we go. Good job shooting down inside of there. I really like that cast. I like the way that you are able to get the dog to go up inside that space, and you are able to stay out of it. So you're taking advantage of it there. You're, you're allowing the dog to get out ahead of you and work that out independently, and I like that very much, but it's also controlled, meaning that, you know, had the dog skipped it, I have absolute confidence that you would have gotten in there. So very nice. So, but in a situation like that, um, you know, we kind of have this alleyway. Um, it's really hard to tell depth for me, you know, how deep that goes. But in a perfect world, maybe you would have held up out here somewhere and sent your dog back in there to investigate that. Um, and again, you have a great dog with a great nose and that works out Okay, so good. And it's got really nice odor obedience because you walk off and dog stays and finishes out. You do get the call. You do call your alerts very, very fast. And I know that it's a matter of time and all, but um, you do call them really, really fast. I like that you go ahead and get this, um, this waste bin taken care of before you leave the search environment. And that's really smart. It's a mature move, and it's not something that we see all the time. And that is one of the reasons that, you know, I would certainly have appreciated, um, you know, the quality of the search. I like the way that the dog checked up on that. Um, and it's interesting to me because there are oftentimes there are dogs that will, that when they check up, it's a clue. It's a big clue because they don't check up unless there was a reason to do so. But then, you know, with your dog, sometimes I see it not checking up in places that scare me a little bit because I would have thought it would have been important. So we like right there, we get a little bit of that nose up. And to me, that that would have been and, and hey, it would have cost me a little of extra time because when I saw my dog do that um, and then, you know, particularly and then look, it would have said to me, hey, maybe I need to, you know, indicate for my dog, you know, somewhere up here, up a little bit higher, um, you know, was that, was that odor up there because my dog checked up. But anyways, it worked out good for you, so that's good. Here, once again, you're out ahead of the dog, and that doesn't make me super happy, but I totally get that you're trying to be, see there again, there's that checkup. Um... And, and I, I have to assume that you're really counting on your dog's odor obedience and odor threshold on that, and that's why you're really sticking it out. And you are doing a good job with it. All the way down to the end, you're being very thorough on this, and that's super good. 
Good job, good job. You get the end of that culvert thing, which is really good. And I like the way that the dog grabs that last little bit right there, that the end of that support, um, because that made a big difference. I'd be, I wouldn't be surprised that if um, in, you know, in your group that searched, if a bunch of people missed that. Um, that's a really nice find. The dog is displaying very high odor obedience, and that's super nice. I like that. Um, yep, now you got to get back to the other side and start knocking out these other high-value targets. You know, hopefully immediately recognize that table is a value and that that has to get checked. Yep, very good. If I could, really quickly, it would help me demonstrate something that I pointed out in the previous video. Your dog showed some bracketing behavior there, and maybe that'll help, you know, sort of concrete what I was saying. So when the dog comes in, um, the first real indication there is on the left side of the table. Dog's not 100% confident. and checks over to the right side, checks back to the left side again, and finally settles on that, which is totally good, absolutely correct, all good stuff. Um, but as a demonstration, you know, you've got the odor down there. The first indicator was the left end of your bracket is here. Your dog moved off in this way to find the other end of the bracket, which it um, did. When the dog circled back, that's very telling to you that it's not that far down. Had your dog struggled with finding that one, and it didn't, I know, um, you could have you know, sort of had a visual indicator and say, hey, my odor's between here and here, and you could have very easily stepped in and helps your dog narrow that out. So just another opportunity to demonstrate or illustrate what I had showed you on the previous thing. So off we go. It's definitely a nice, big, open search area. Um, I want to say we get out of bounds over there a little bit. Bit. I don't know if there's much as far as high value targets in that area. Um, this one right here is a is a real win for you. There's your bracketing again, by the way. The checking up, that's all bracketing behavior. And there's your alert. Um, I want to say that's the last one. Let's let this finish out just to make sure. Yep. So that's all we have on that. Um, let me let me skip right back to that last one again. So a couple of things. One is I'm really glad that you were able to get back there. You had enough time to do so and find that last um, that last odor, especially since you had already been past it the first time. So let's look at it on the first pass. What happens? No checking up, no check backs. You did ask the dog to go there. Nope, nothing. So um, I don't put that on you at all. I didn't see much either. Um, but then as we get over here, out to the right side, bracketing off to the left side, we check up. No, let's go back to the right side. We check up. And there it is. Um, I'm going to have to assume, uh, without better information, that your hide's somewhere in here, maybe in a crack or something like that. Um, but yeah, again, so another really nice example of bracketing behavior. Your dog comes in, encounters odor, and sort of checks it back. And has odor, but feels like it needs to go up. And checks it back. And checks it up. And that's classic bracketing behavior. So um, that one actually worked out really, really fast. But just as an illustration, um, when there are opportunities that you feel like your dog is bracketing but not able to finish it, um, you know, that could be it. And we see those a lot of times in inaccessible hides where dogs just continue to bracket back and forth because it is inaccessible. And by applying that sort of technique, it can help you make that sort of a determination as to whether or not you think it might be a inaccessible um, type of an odor. But, um, you know, so I pretty much agree with the judge in giving you a pronounce in this. It was a really nice search. 
Um, there wasn't much that I would ask you to change. There are some fine handling techniques that I might recommend to you. And so just as a real quick recap, let me offer to them to you one more time. One is that I like to see the dog driving out in front of you a little bit more often. Um, situations like this, uh, where you are sort of leading the search aren't super fantastic. Um, thankfully you have a really nice, a dog with really nice search intent. It's areas like that that really shine to me where you're able to send the dog back into areas, cast to them, as it were, and have success with it. I just like would like you to maybe continue it in opportunities like this. You could have cast that as well. Again, you have a really nice odor-obedient dog. There are certainly times where we see the dog driving out. Um... That's all drivey and all, you know, that's all very, very good. Very happy with that. Um, even though the dog got a little bit of a neck check there on the collar, I don't think that that means a lot to this dog. I think that the dog tolerates it very, very well. Um, I'd be interested to know how you guys typically do on high hides because the one at the end, you know, the dog didn't get initially, and I don't see the dog checking up a whole lot. Um... Hopefully you're not having any problems with that because I don't see a lot of, of, well, there's no elevation in this, well, very little elevation in this search. There was no elevation in the, the other search that I saw. So I'm curious how that's going for you. Um, and I do see the dog putting its feet up on things from time to time. So I, I don't know. It, it'd be interesting to know. I'd appreciate that feedback. So, but again, anyway, back to the search. All in all, very, very nice. I like your coverage. You were very thorough in covering everything. Uh, there wasn't any real wastes of time. Um, it's, it's right. It's really pretty straightforward. When you come into a big open area like this, you look for targets of opportunity. You look for high value targets. Where are places that we have to get? And then make sure you get there. And if time allows, get there in two different directions so your dog has an opportunity to encounter multiple points of wind. Um, right, so there you go. Really nice search. Uh, once again, thank you for you know trusting me to take a look at this and give you my input. Hopefully, between the two videos, um, I've been able to give you some valuable feedback and some opportunities to apply some finer um you know, some of the finer details and help you to increase your craft. Uh, you're already looking strong and well on your way. Thanks again, and I hope to see more soon.